In this video, we give our guards health so that instead of being one hit wonders, they take a few shots to go down. Uh, and we also implement our doors. And I've taken the, the sprite straight from Wolfenstein for this one. Let's have a look. Let's give the guards some health. So grab our guard script. So at the moment, all we really have for our guard is the function die. And the way that is triggered is our player um, calls that method um, if the player's raycast is colliding with the guard. So let's go back to our guard and let's give it some health. So first thing we want to do is add in a variable. So var guard health, 100, I guess. That's, you know, pretty standard. And then um, we'll keep this die function exactly as it is, but we're going to add another function um, on top of it. So instead of uh, just having... The, the die function called by our player. What we're going to do is we're going to add this take damage function and that will call the, the die function. So function take damage, we want to take 30 from our guard's health. And if the guard health gets to um, zero or below, then we're going to call our die function. So that's the only real update we're doing. So we're adding um, guard health up here and then we are adding a take damage function. We can leave the die function exactly as it is and then jump into our player and instead of calling the die function on our, um, or checking if our collider has the method die and then calling it, we're instead going to check and see if we have the take, oops, take damage function um, method. And then if we do, we're going to take that damage away. So what we've done is we've just changed it. So our player um, attacking mechanism, which is this whole ray colliding mumbo jumbo, um, we're checking to see if we have take damage now instead of die. And if we do, we call that take damage function. That should be enough to actually get our guards being a bit uh, rough and tumble. So let's jump in and have a look. So what would have happened is one stab would kill, but now instead, multiple stabs to kill and also I'm dying too. I'm not even good enough to win at my own game at the moment. All right, there we go. So now our guards uh, lose 30 health out of 100 for each time they get hit, making it a little bit more challenging. Excellent. That is our guard health sorted. Let's make our door. So we're going to need to start uh, create a new scene. And the root node for this we're going to have is a static body 3D. Let's rename it to door so we don't get lost. Now our, our um, static body 3D is going to need a collision shape under it um, to handle collisions. And then we're going to want to have a um, area 3D, which we're going to use to detect whether our player is uh, near the door or not. It needs its own collision shape. Then we're going to need a sprite 3D to actually represent our door and an animation player to show that um, sprite opening and closing. All right, so that's our basic structure for our scene. So let's go ahead and save that as door. Excellent. Let's add a script to it as well because we're going to need that, um, extending our static body 3D. But before we do our script, let's um, go over to our 3D space and we'll work there first. So the first thing we're going to need is our asset for our door to uh, go into our texture here. So there is a very handy PNG just called door.png that um, will be on itch or in the completed project files for this one. So door.png is what we're going to drag over. Now it does actually have two states. We got some shadow and stuff like that, but I'm not too worried about that for right now. Um, so we have two horizontal frames. Um, we're going to use frame one. Let's just bring that up so that it's um, about level with the floor. Let's just have a look at that transform there. Let's call it about 0.3, I reckon it's probably good enough. All right, so we've brought that up 0.3 of a meter. It looks level with our door. Uh, it looks like what it's meant to look like. So let's set up our collision shape for that door first shape. So probably just a box is gonna be fine. Um, so this is just for making sure we can't walk through the door, right? So um, bring that up. That'll be fine. Okay, so that's our collision shape for our door, but our area 2D, so the detecting whether our player is um, in the vicinity of the door, that's gonna need one as well. So let's make this one maybe a little bit bigger so we can see it. Um, oh, and bring that up. There we go, something like that. Oh, it's maybe a bit too big. There we go. All right, so that can be our collision shape for the area 2D. So our player is near the door and can open the door. 
Our Sprite2D is going to be that door.png that we've put in, right? And then our animation player is how we handle making it look like it's opening or closing. So let's uh, come down here, let's add a new animation, new we'll open it. animation. We're gonna um, set up some keyframes, right? So this is gonna be our initial state. So we've got a, uh, our Y point three, just so it's level with the floor, um, but otherwise nothing else has changed. So we're gonna set a keyframe for our position and a keyframe for our rotation. Now we're gonna move ahead to one second and we're gonna make some changes to this. So we want our X here to be 0.3, our Y to be 0.3 and our Z to be negative 0.3. And then we just wanna go negative 90 on our rotation. Now, I'm pretty sure that should give us what we wanna see. So let's just have a keyframe of each of those and then let's have a playthrough. Let's see that again, just from an angle there. Yeah, that's good enough, I think, for what we're trying to achieve here. Excellent, let's save that. So that's our animation done as well. So now what we can do is come and have a look at our script. So at the moment, rather boring. Let's, uh, let's grab some gear and throw it in and then uh, we can link up our signals. So here is what we should have as our script, all right? So we're gonna extend our static body 3D. We've got two on ready variables, one for our animation player, this one here, and one for our area 3D, this one here. Um, and we set a variable called is open to false, so our door starts closed. Then we wanna look for inputs, um, and we're just gonna use the tab key here, which is already set up. So UI focus next is just tab, so we're gonna look for that. So if our door is not open and someone presses the tab key, uh, oh, that's more for my benefit, we can get rid of that. We open our door, which is a function down here. So what does that look like? So open door, we set our is open to true. We disable our collision shape so we can walk through that space. And then we play the open animation that we just made in our animation player. And again, I can get rid of my debug statement. actually statements. signal our area 3D through to our script. So we wanna grab our body entered signal and we also want to grab our body as exited signal, and that's just connecting these two bits of code if, up. Uh, you're paying close attention. You'll see that our um, when we're in our area three D, we're changing this variable in the body, and our body here in this case is going to be our player, right? So our player needs to have a variable called can open door that we can turn on and off, so that when uh, our player is trying to open a door, they can't do it unless they're next to the door, right, in the area 3D. So we just need to um, go to our player script and add that variable in, right? So where's our player script? Here it is here, player can open door false. So that's all we need to have in there to make sure that um, our player can open or close the door. So if we save that, let's now go and have a look at um, the level where we wanna put our door in to see if we can't, where's that 3D view? All right, so here's the gap that I said I wanted to add the door to. So let's grab our door scene and let's drag it over and you will notice we've got our scale a bit wrong. And the reason is that is the door from Wolfenstein, whereas the other assets we're using are just general sort of assets. So we need to be able to work this out and get some scales sorted. Now I think from memory, if we go to our inspector and we go down to our transform and we go to our scale, I think if we go to five that way, seven that way, yeah, and oops, and five that way as well. Now we just drag this guy over a bit. That looks right. Um, maybe our Y could be like eight or 7.5. Yeah, all right, I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's our door in the game now let's uh let's see if all this works together the way it's meant to hang on we've got a warning here what's that on you oh no that's that's probably fine probably fine confidence abounds uh yeah one thought is i might actually end up getting sniped pretty quickly because i'm terrible at my own games believe it or not let's uh just give ourselves lots of health all right here we go let's see if we can um get that door working Yeah, take that. Um, all right, collect some ammo, just, you know, cause, cause that's how we go. Oh, I need a gun, I need a mini gun, yes. All right, now we're talking. All right, let's go through our little teleporter and I see a door. All right, well, he's dead. So moment of truth, guys, 
We can't walk through it, excellent. But we hit our tab, it opens, and we can walk through. Ta-da! Tis a door. All right, so that is our basic, and I mean basic, version of a door um, in uh, Godot 4, uh, 4.3 beta in this case, um, for your Wolfenstein 3D clone. So